So this is a close Apollo four-string bass, Fishman pickups. It's got a number of great features. I'm going to be doing a review of this today, and hopefully you'll gain some understanding and insight onto the strengths of the bass. And it's a Utah company, and I live in Utah, so it's pretty easy for me to uh, do a review and check these things out. I met Close Guitars at a NAMM show in Anaheim a few years ago. And I believe Ian was the person that I talked to at Close Guitars, and they had a prototype there. And so I played it. And um, me being a person who's pretty honest about feedback, um, I wasn't real happy with the, the body that the neck was attached to. Kind of gave him some feedback at the time, and uh, it was brutally honest, and, and he took it well, which I thought was cool. And I kind of figured I'd never hear from them again. Fast forward a few years later, uh, they got in touch with me and um, he made a massive upgrade from prototype to this Apollo Pro. And so when I checked it out, um, there were a lot of great features that um, I liked about it. Um, and I wanted to uh, explore it further. So they sent me uh, off to play some of them and, and get a feel for them. And, uh, and that's what I've done is I've, I've gotten to, uh, to know the instrument really well and decided to do a review as well. Extremely light. Uh, they use, uh, I, I believe the wood is a kume. Uh, I'm, I hope I'm getting the pronunciation of that right. But it's, uh, it very much tonally reminds me of mahogany. And um, I think it does a pretty good job of sounding like mahogany. It is lighter than mahogany. Uh, so I've really enjoyed the weight of the bass uh, quite a bit. It still sits with you well on a strap, but it doesn't feel cumbersome at all. I'm just playing a little bit of uh, a song that probably everybody recognizes. And the reason I'm doing, I'm using a muted, muting uh, technique is because Carbon fiber bases are notorious for not getting any warmth. They usually are quite sterile. Uh, but with these Fishman pickups, I've noticed you can change your technique a little bit and, uh, and really bring some warmth and dynamic into your playing. And that's one of the first things I noticed about the bass is that it's, it doesn't just sound like it's notes on glass, uh, like some carbon fiber instruments can sound. Um, it puts itself in a, a much higher price point than what they're charging for it too, um, by being by having some diversity in, in the pickups. So uh, I've really enjoyed the instrument uh, far more than I thought I would. Like I said, you can get some warmth. It's got, uh, I wanna go through some of the controls of it um, because with, with some of the demos I'm gonna be playing, I'm gonna be using a lot of different sounds that the bass is capable of making. We've got uh, a passive uh, sound, full active in the middle, and at the bottom is kind of a nice compromise scoop uh, type sound for like slapping and other, um, and other uh, scoop sounds that you can get with the instrument. Um, and I'm going to use this bottom switch that scoops it, just so you can hear a little bit of the slap sound. I won't play much, but I'll just give you an idea. So there's a lot of brightness you'll hear in that. So the instead of looking at it as a negative, think about the opportunity to roll off. When you, when you roll off uh, treble on any instrument, you're also rolling off noise. And you can kind of hear it's got that, that uh, nice scoop sound um, and I've just rolled the treble most of the way off and kind of made a little bit warmer scoop slap sound. Um, 
it is uh, what it's going to do well in that department is have really clear register. What's great about having kind of hot, a hot amount of treble or um, a bright instrument. Well, like I said, you could roll off noise. This is going to perform really, really well in the studio in terms of its clarity and it's low noise. So you're going to be able to get really clean takes in your recording. So these are some of the things that immediately jump out to me um, about the instrument. I do like the pickup selector. I find that the, um, the back pickup, when you roll to the back pickup, um, and you have that, once again, that treble down You can get a nice, uh, a nice tone on the instrument. So you can tell it just has a nice, uh, a nice sound. It's a good, it's, it's a good instrument to build a basic groove on and get really good clarity and punch coming from the instrument. Uh, that's the thing I will say about carbon fiber that I've always been impressed by in every model I've ever picked up. Uh, the clarity and punch is there in spades. Um, where they, where they've suffered is in the department of not having a flexible enough circuit to warm that sound up if need be. And that's where I think this instrument is a little more successful than some of the carbon fibers that I've picked up before. Uh, in terms of the flexibility of the preamp allows you to warm up that sound a bit. And the instrument can actually be used in a more diverse palette um, because of that. Now, uh, there's something that it does so well, I'm gonna talk about that a little bit uh, next, is the world of solo bass. It, it has such clean, articulated notes that you can really do some uh, fun stuff with it. Um, and I'll just give an example of that. Um, you can tell those notes are all bright and clear and just really sound good. Once again, just really clean and clear. Uh, when, when I've got chords going, when I'm playing with both hands, when I'm playing uh, percussive techniques, whether with the right or left hand, the instrument picks it up very, very, very well. And uh, the, you, can, you can kind of hear that, that voicing, that really uh, articulate, um, bright, clear uh, function in a solo bass aspect. So it's something that I do, I do like about the instrument a lot. So um, it's got diversity. It's got a, a number of uh, sounds that you can get out of it. So I'm gonna go through some of those. Um, I have the volume all the way up uh, in every, every instance that I'm gonna to play today, I'm gonna to have the volume on full. Um, the bass, you can, you can immediately tell, I'm gonna keep everything uh, centered. Um, I'm gonna disengage the scoop and put it into the um, wide open active mode in the center on the switch back here. And I'm gonna go through and just give kind of a, a demo of what these controls actually do. So I'm gonna start with the low E. I think it's a good place to start when you're talking about the, the, uh, the bass on the preamp. Start with the lowest note. So you can hear it sounds pretty thin all the way down. You start to bring that up, you notice an immediate difference. That's halfway. tell it can get very subby almost like a dub sound with the bass all the way up now if I roll off the treble it's even going to magnify that dubby very dub sub type sound really thick meaty sound um, and that's the bass stop so I'm going to move that back to center It'll give you a good idea. I'm going to move the treble back to center. Once again, I'll give you a really good idea of what the, the, uh, the flat, uh, flat on the preamp, 
not not flat response, but flat on the preamp what that sounds like. Sort of the default setting, if you will. Uh, now I'm gonna move the treble. And this time I'm gonna start higher. That's what the treble rolled off. You could you could tell it still has plenty of bright, uh, clean sound. And I, I suspect that's due to the carbon fiber in the neck. Bring it up halfway. It starts to sound bright. That is very bright. Now, the question is, is it a usable tone? And here's what I think. And um, those, those of you that have been in the studio a lot will understand where I'm coming from. Um, I've never, and this is just me personally, recorded treble on any preamp I've ever owned past one o'clock. So just past the center detent. I would not on this bass either, especially since that treble's magnified. But I think um, in terms of having the range, I don't play some of the, the more modern progressive metal and things where you might hear the, the highs boosted a bit. I don't play that. So for me to speak about whether they're usable tones or not, um, it goes into genres of music that I don't play. And so um, I'm not the right guy to say this, but I think it's very usable from the center to tent down. I think it does get a little overly bright, once again, for the way I play, as you, uh, as you move the treble up. just a bit much uh, for my playing style and for the type of music that I play. So um, treble works very good. You could tell on both of these knobs there is profound movement in both the bass and treble. Um, the frequencies that it's voiced to are effective, they're usable, and I think it's a great bass to record with or play live with. It is fantastic in the solo bass arena. So it's got some really great, uh, great things going for it. Um, no bass is going to be great at everything. And I'm going to talk a little bit about some preferences that I have. In a solo world, this would be one of the first instruments I would reach for. Um, if I were playing uh, on a track where I was doing some funk or slap, I would probably choose my Fender Jazz bass for that technique. Um, ahead of anything else. That's just being honest. Um, I'm not going to reach for this. However, on a gig where I was playing a diverse set, this might be the exact bass I would reach for. I wouldn't have to change. I wouldn't have to move. I would know that everything would be clean and clear and well heard. So uh, just because it, it's not going to do everything better at every technique, doesn't mean it's not an incredibly valid instrument. I like it a lot. I wouldn't play it if I did. I wouldn't review it um, if, if I didn't like it. Um, so I, I'm very high on the instrument itself. Uh, now, the, the pickup selector, you'll notice that's clearly the back pickup. I almost don't have to tell people that are familiar with different sounds. And you could hear this profound difference as it moves to center detent. tell has a, a nice sound in that front uh, pickup position. Once again, is it a P bass? No. Uh, why am I talking about P and J bass when I'm, I'm uh, looking at a, a carbon fiber neck bass? I want to explain that real quick. Uh, these are kind of the industry standards of what you'd see in the studio over the past several years. I mean, we're talking like a, a 60 year history of these two bases being sort of the, the, the bottom line of what uh, sound engineers are looking for. So they're a great place to start a comparison on. It's not going to do what I, I wouldn't put flats on this, roll to the front pickup, and um, 
record Motown on this. Um, once again, I would reach for a, a precision bass. Um, the areas I would use this is if I were playing a whole album and the music was diverse or original sounding or modern, this is the perfect bass to reach for in that recording setting. It's the perfect uh, bass to reach for in a diverse live uh, application where you're playing a lot of different styles of music. So there's just so many things to like about the instrument um, in terms of uh, the, the tonal flexibility that it has, um, the fact it can get very deep lows, it can get very bright highs. So I think it covers a wide range of styles and uh, uh, music genres that you can use this in application on. And for that, it is just a fabulous instrument. I wanna talk about something else too, the price point. Um, you know, there, there's a great deal of carbon fiber instruments out on the market. And we're talking price points that are probably well over $4,000 for some of them. And uh, probably a starting point is somewhere around 3000 from my experience. You could pick up uh, some lightly used models in the $2,000 range. This base is right around $2,000. I have a number of different bases and I play these. They are in my rotation of bases that I play. Um, so I, I do like the bass. The other thing about me that um, I told close right off the bat, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't play it. Um, there's no reason for me to. Uh, people that uh, know anything about me, which maybe you do, maybe you don't, know I have a lot of basses. I don't need additional instruments. Um, I didn't want additional instruments, but now that I have them, they've found a place in my rotation. Also, as an older guy, I like the lightweight. Um, I really like the lightweight a lot. And, uh, uh, you know, a little bird told me there might be a five string in the future. And uh, let's hope I can get my hands on one of those too. 24 frets, great harmonics, great low end, flexible preamp, uh, more than adequate bridge. There are a lot of lot of companies that put out bases at this price point, and I don't like their bridge. This is a great bridge, uh, great tuners, great ratio on the gearing there. Um, so I think it's a very effective instrument. This is the close. Apollo standard. It has close pickups. It has